Good morning. This is Greater Gospel Temple, the Church of Praise and Worship, and I am evangelist, missionary, Shirley Polk Davis, and this is Greater Gospel Temple, the Church of Praise and Worship, and for that I am glad that God has blessed me to come before you today. We're doing the video today, and I'm trying to get everything adjusted here <laughs> with the video. But it is a wonderful day that God has made, and I am rejoicing, and I'm glad in this day. I'm so thankful for everything that he's doing, everything that he's done. He is so good. He is worthy to be praised, and for that, I am so glad. It is the will of God that I, I'm sitting here and talking to you today about the goodness of God. It is his will. If it were not his will, then I would not be talking to you today. So I am so thankful for the opportunity to talk about the goodness of God to you. The scripture that I have for you today is in Ephesians. And it's a super, super good, <laughs> good scripture. It's Ephesians, the second chapter. And uh, we'll go right into it. And I want to do this and split this screen right quick here uh, let me split this screen right because I always like to be able to okay I got it I think I got it split I believe let's see here because I want to be able to do everything and be able to monitor myself also so I can make sure that I'm still on the air okay and I am so far let me do this get these scriptures where I can get to them and we're going right on in the name of the Lord on the the what is it the 20th of November Greater Gospel Temple is hosting an evening of healing and restoration you want to be there you want to be there God is going to be healing and restoring that night the power of God is in the place his spirit dwells in Greater Gospel Temple and for that I am so thankful when I walk in I say God I thank you I thank you for blessing me to live when I walked into your sanctuary letting me live because I know that once I was a as Paul said a rich undone <laughs> sinner but God has sanctified me saved me I am so thankful not by anything that I've done but by his goodness and his loving kindness and his tender mercies I am sitting here talking to you today and talking about the Word of God it's a privilege it's a blessing and I cannot say it enough I cannot stress it enough how thankful I am to God for everything that he's done everything that he's doing everything he's going to do so please this is for your good, okay? Join us November 20th at Greater Gospel Temple. We are the Church of Praise and Worship, 3422 Cedardale Road, Dallas, Texas, 75241. You can email me at ggtchurch66 at yahoo.com. You can call me at 214-943-9723. I am available if I don't answer right away, I will get back with you. You know, the number is good 24-7. The email is good 24-7. Now, you know how it is. We have to use discretion with the numbers. We have to be wise with people's telephone numbers so we know that there are certain hours that we do not call unless there is an emergency. And unless you want prayer or advice, then that's a different thing, okay? Many blessings to you. We're going right into our lesson here today. I am going to get right into it here. Ephesians 2, and I want to move it up so that I can make sure that my eyes are focused really good. Well, it just did a little change on me here. Okay, and you hath he quickened who were dead to trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Let me, let me spread this right here. The children of disobedience, 
among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. You hear me say God's grace and mercy, his loving kindness, his tender mercies. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised up us, raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Now I need to check something right here. So let me check something right quick, because I don't know what I... I did what I should do with this. I'm just doing a little bit of something right here. Check it out here. Maybe I did share. I guess I did. Okay, let me go ahead and put this back here. All right, now let me pull this back up. And here we go again. Okay, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath made, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at time, that at that time, Ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now we're getting to where we left off. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, 
and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. This is saying a lot. It's saying that nothing that we did caused us to be saved. It's because God loves us. He had mercy on us, compassion on us. He wanted us saved. So therefore, Jesus Christ volunteered to come so that we can be saved. And we were, you know, they called us unclean, uncircumcised and all of that. But now we are with God the same as the Jews. Okay? So now, let me go to the Living Bible. You know, that's my, my favorite other uh, translation. Once you were under God's, it, it really explains it. Once you were under God's curse, doomed forever for your sins. You see how plain it is? We were once under God's curse. We were doomed forever because of our sins. You went along with the crowd and were just like all the others, full of sin, obeying Satan, the mighty prince of the power of the air, who is at work right now in the hearts of those who are against the Lord. He's right now working in the hearts of those who are against the Lord, okay? All of us used to be just as they are, our lives expressing the evil within, doing every wicked thing that our passions or our evil thoughts might lead us into. We started out bad, being born with evil natures and were under God's anger just like everyone else. We were no different from everyone else. God was angry at us, but just wait, okay? But God is so rich in mercy. You hear that? God is so rich in mercy. He loved us so much that even though we were spiritually dead and doomed by our sins, he gave us back our lives again when he raised Christ from the dead only by his underserved favor or undeserved favor okay, have we ever been saved and lifted us up from the grave into glory along with Christ where we sit with him in the heavenly realms all because of what Christ Jesus did. And now God can always point to us as examples of how very very rich his kindness is as shown in all he has done for us through Jesus Christ. Because of his kindness, you have been saved through trusting Christ. And even trusting is not of yourselves. It too is a gift from God. I mean, even as trusting in God is not of itself. It's not us. It's not us. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good we have done. You hear that? Salvation is not a reward for the good that we have done. So none of us can take any credit for it because we're not good. We haven't done any good, anything to deserve God's forgiveness because he loves us. So that's why we're forgiven. Okay. It is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. That we should spend these lives in helping others. Helping people in whatever area God has equipped us to help people. But most of all, for us to tell the people about Jesus Christ the goodness of God, how God led Jesus Christ who volunteered to come to the earth so that we can be saved from eternal damnation, okay? We are to tell people and help people. Let them know about Jesus. Let them know that they can too be saved if they're not saved. And even if they are saved, tell them that everything that we need, everything that we need, they need is in Christ Jesus. 
Jesus paid it all so that we could have that faith and that trust. And the trust is not anything that we have within ourselves. It's because it is a gift from God that we have the trust that we have in him through his son, Jesus Christ. Never forget that once you were heathen, you hear that? Never forget that once you were heathen, now I'm going back to Mother Watson now. She says some people think they're all that and a bag of potato chips. Listen to this. Never forget that once you were heathen and that you were called godless and unclean by the Jews, but their hearts too were still unclean, even though they were going through the ceremonies and rituals of the godly, for they circumcised themselves as a sign of godliness. Okay, so they're telling us that we're unclean and we're bad, but they're just as bad themselves. So that's why we have to be very careful when it comes to judging people, criticizing people unfairly, out of jealousy, envy, strife, all that old junk. You know, we have to be very careful because one is not any better than the other. We were all heathens. And it's by the grace of God that we are saved. So who am I to think I'm so much better than somebody else? Yes, I'm saved. I don't do the things that I used to do in the world when I was in the world. I don't do those things. But I have no right to put myself on a pedestal above other people. Because just like the sinner today, I was once a sinner just like that. And by the grace of God, I am saved. And so, therefore, it's my duty, my obligation, to let the sinner know about Jesus Christ, about God, and know that they can be saved through Jesus Christ. Because I was once a sinner. I was on my way to hell. And I was going fast, too. <laughs> but God saved me saved me because of his grace. Nothing that I did. Nothing. So listen, there's nothing that we can do to earn sanctification. It's because of God's grace and his favor and his love and his tender mercies toward us that we are saved today and that he is saving today. Nothing that we can do will cause us to be saved. It's because of God. It's a gift from God, okay? We were heathens, just like other heathens, but now we are saved. And so we don't have a right to brag and boast that we're so much better than other people. Yes, we brag and boast that God saved us and, and snatched us from the clutches and the pits of hell. We boast in that, but we don't boast that we're so much higher than everybody else, you know, untouchable and all that, and we're so superior and all that. No, we are to be an, an example to people and let them see our humble spirits because we are saved, okay? I didn't say crazy, you know, uh, pitiful, you know, what I mean, you know, uh, doormat spirits. I'm not saying that humble spirits and they see Christ in us we don't have to say a word people see God working in us now that's what really really makes me feel good when people can see can see God in my life it makes me feel good and God is assuring me that girl you're still you're still doing what I told you to do and then I try I said Lord am I doing enough what else can I do? Am I doing enough? And so God, tell me what I need to do because I do not want to miss the mark. I don't want to come before you on judgment day and you tell me that I could have done more and I did not do more. So therefore, I will be sent to hell. I don't want that. I don't want that. That's why I strive daily, minute by minute, second by second, to please God to please God, understand, to please God, okay? Now, remember that in those days, you were living utterly apart from Christ. You were enemies of God's children, and he had promised you no help. You hear that? He didn't promise us any help. You were lost without God, without hope. We were lost without God, without hope. But now, you, me, we belong to Christ Jesus, and though we once, you, 
me, we, once were far away from God. Now we have been brought very near to him because of what Jesus Christ has done for you, me, us, with his blood. Okay, you know I'm adding that. You, me, us, in there with his blood. He did it for all of us. All of us who are saved. All of us who are not saved. He did it for all of us. And that's why we are saved, okay? Because we accepted him as our Lord and Savior. For Christ himself is our way of peace. He has made peace between us Jews and you Gentiles by making us all one family, breaking down the wall of contempt. So we're all one family. No one is better than the other, okay? No one is better than the other. We're all family. So if anybody, you know, says differently, then they're going against the word of God, okay? By his death, let me do one more thing. He has made peace between us Jews and you Gentiles by making us all one family, breaking down the wall of contempt that used to separate us. By his death, he ended the angry resentment between us caused by the Jewish laws that favored the Jews and excluded the Gentiles, for he died to annul that whole system of Jewish laws. All those laws they had, he died, and though all those things became uh, extinct, okay? He annulled all of that. Then he took the two groups that had been opposed to each other and made them parts of himself. Thus he fused us together to become one new person. And at last there was peace. Okay. And this is, uh, <clears throat> he's talking back then, but it's us talking to us today, okay? As parts of the same body, our anger against each other has disappeared, for both of us have been reconciled to God. And so the feud ended at last at the cross. And he has brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were very far away from him and to us Jews who were near. Now all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, may come to God the Father with the Holy Spirit's help because of what Christ has done for us. Now you are no longer strangers to God. Look, we're no longer strangers to God and foreigners to heaven, but you are members of God's very own family, citizens of God's country, and you belong in God's household with every other Christian. No prejudices, no big eyes and little U's, none of that. We're all equal in the sight of God. We all belong in God's household with every other Christian. And when you say you're a Christian, that means a lot, okay? Being a Christian and saying you're a Christian, sometimes they could be two different things, okay? All right, so we better strive to be a Christian, all right? What a foundation you stand on now, the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone of the building is Jesus Christ himself. We who believe are carefully joined together with Christ as parts of a beautiful, constantly growing temple for God. And you also are, join, are joined with him and with each other by the Spirit and are part of this dwelling place of God. We're all brothers and sisters in the Lord. No big eyes, as I said, no little U's. We're all equal in the sight of God. None of us has done anything, I'm recapping here, okay? Anything that merits sanctification. It's because God had mercy on us. He loves us so much. It's because he opened the door of salvation to us. He now made us all equal to the Jews who were the ones who the door of salvation was open to. They rejected Christ. God opened it to the Gentiles. We were called heathens. They didn't even want to deal with us. But now we're all equal. We're all the same in the eyes of God. All of us who are saved are equal. We are equal in the sight of God. God loves all of us. If you're watching, if you're not saved, I admonish you to give your life to Jesus Christ. It's so easy. All you have to do is ask God to forgive you of your sins. Repent. Tell him you're sorry for the sinful life that you've led. 
Tell him that you accept him as your Lord and Savior, and it's a done deal. Then what you do now is you get into join with a congregation that has a pastor, a leader, who is teaching the unadulterated truth, the word of God. Okay, you need to be there. It needs to be a strong person so that you can learn the word of God and you can get in with the right people who can help you to stay saved and be able to help you to learn as you follow on to know the Lord. I love you. Enjoy the rest of your day. It is such a wonderful thing to be able to come to you on Ustream.com, Ustream.tv and be able to share the word of God with you and I'm trying my best to get back to my page uh, where my uh, camera is on oh there I go okay <laughs> I'm back trying to get back to that page okay I love you and I pray that God will continually bless and keep you that is certainly certainly my desire because I don't want anyone to go to hell and believe me there is a hell okay just as sure as there is a heaven, there is a hell. And then the Bible, the Bible is our guide. The Bible, there's the King James Version, and I'm going to say this, there are other uh, books out there that were not included in the King James Version too, okay? But the King James Version is the one that we, to we rely on mostly here, and it has enough in there to let us know that we can be saved and that we can make it into the kingdom of God. I love you. Greater Gospel Temple, the church of praise and worship. Don't forget November 20th at 7 p.m. 3422 Cedardale Road, Dallas, Texas, 75241. And uh, the email address is ggtchurch66 at yahoo.com. I appreciate you. I love you. I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. And believe it or uh, not, you still have time to get to the sanctuary of God, okay? Enjoy your day. Happy November 1st.